Okay, so let's consider pure water at 25 degrees Celsius, right? We know that you know, the concentration of hydrogen ions is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7th, and that the pH is 7, right? Now, what happens if we add 0 0.001 molar hydrochloric acid to that solution, right? Well, right, we know hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, and so that will dissociate completely. So after it dissociates, we should get 0 0.0010 molar hydrogen ions, which will overwhelm the few hydrogen ions we had in there in the first place, right? And so the pH would be 3, right? And so by adding that, we went from 7 down to 3, a change in 4 pH units, right? Okay? Now, what if we go back to our pure water and add... 0 0.0010 molar sodium hydroxide, right? We know when that dissociates, we're going to get 0 0.0010 molar hydroxide ions in that, in that aqueous solution. And, right, because of our Kw divided by... 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3. That's going to make our concentration of hydrogen ions um, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 11, which will make our pH 11, right? And so, right, adding base to pure water, right, if we go from here to here, right, we went up, right, our change, our change was plus 4 pH units, okay? So, adding a little bit of acid or a little bit of base to pure water changes the pH a lot, right, by 4 pH units. So, let's look at a slightly different solution, right? Let's consider, right, a solution where we have 0.05 molar acetic acid and 0.05 molar sodium acetate in the same solution, right? And so that's creating this situation, right? If this is our equilibrium, Right? Acetic acid is in equilibrium with hydrogen ions that are aqueous plus acetate ions, right? From our acetic acid, we'll have 0 0.050 molar. When our sodium acetate dissociates, we'll have 0 0.050 molar, right? If we put those, right, we, you know, the, the Ka for acetic acid which we've dealt with before, is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 molar, right? And so if we put, you know, if we go make that our x, and we make the assumption, then we have 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to our concentration of hydrogen ions times the 0 0.050 divided by 0 0.050, so 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions, right? And so the pH is equal to 4.745, which I just, you know, that's not rounding, right? Okay, so we've got that pH. Okay, so we've got 
right? We've got that same solution. What's going to happen to that solution if we add 0 0.0010, make sure my points, molar, um, hydrochloric acid to that solution, right? What's going to happen? Well, right, if we look quickly, right, hydrochloric acid will react with the basic form of our, of our um, pair. And so we would start with, right, sodium acetate. plus HCl, hydrochloric acid, makes acetic acid. Right? Plus sodium chloride, right? And if we do our, right, if we quickly do our initial change, final, because this is a complete reaction, right? If we have 0 0.05 of this, and we have 0 0.001 of this, and 0 0.05 of that, and 0 of that, then because it's a complete reaction, Right? It becomes a limiting reactant problem. We will react all of our limiting reactant. Right? That will determine the concentration of everything. Right? And so then when we consider our equilibrium, It's going to be, right, our acetic acid. It's going to be in equilibrium with acetate ion, right, plus hydrogen ions, right? We've, we're starting with, right, this much acetic acid and this much acetate, right? Those become our initial concentrations. 0 0.051, 0 0.049, and, right, our hydrogen ion concentration becomes X. So you get the 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is going to be equal to our X times right, 0 0.049 over 0 0.051, right? So you get that X, which is the hydrogen ion concentration, is 1.87 times 10 to the minus 5, And the pH is 4.727. Okay, so, right, let's compare that up here, right? Adding this much acid to water, right, with water, our change in pH was, what, minus 4 pH units? While here, let's go back color, right? If we go compare that to that, our change in pH units is only 0 0.017, right? So the amount of acid that changed water's pH by four units only changed this solution's pH by 
0.017 units, right? Almost no change at all. And so this is what we mean by a solution that is a buffer, right? The chemistry of the solution, right, the fact that it has a mixture of an, an acid and its conjugate base makes it resist changes in pH relative to other solutions. Okay, so let's look at, a, you know, we've got some pure water and we're going to add um, 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide. Right? Well, we know that we, when we add the sodium hydroxide, it will dissociate, right? And that will result in 0 0.010 molar hydroxide ions, right? So to find the concentration of hydrogen ions, we take the Kw and divide it by the concentration of hydroxide ions, and you get then... 1.0 times 10 to the minus 12, and that would make the pH 12, right? And since pure water started at 7, right, that would be a change in pH of plus 5 pH units, right? So now let's consider our... 0 0.050 molar acetic acid, 0 0.05 molar sodium acetate solution, right? In the same way, okay? Right? Our complete reaction involves a base, sodium hydroxide, so it's going to want to react with an acid, the acetic acid, and that's going to be a complete reaction to give sodium acetate. Plus water, which is a liquid, so we can ignore it in our equilibrium. Right, our right, our initial is going to be the um, zero point zero one, zero point zero five, zero point zero five. It's liquid, so we don't care about it, right? This becomes our limiting reactant. Right, so you end up with zero of that, 0 0.04 of that, 0 0.06 of the sodium acetate, right? Okay, so given that, right, our Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, it's going to be equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions, times the concentration of the base, which is 0 0.06, divided by the concentration of the acid, which is 0 0.04, right? So 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.06 equal 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5. And we said that is... Right? That's going to be equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions. Right? That gives us a pH of 4.921. Given that our initial pH was 4.745, right? That is a change in pH of... 0 0.176, right, for a change in pH, right? But remember, this is the same amount of base, right, that with water, right, our change in pH for water 
was plus five pH units. So again, in the presence of our solution with a combination of the acid and the base, this, the amount of base that would raise pure water by five pH units only raised that solution by less than two tenths of a pH unit. Okay? And so again, that is what is characteristic of a buffer solution. Right? When you add acid or base, it resists change in pH. So here's our titration curve, right, that we'd get with, you know, 0.1 molar acetic acid if we add sodium hydroxide, which would which would make sodium acetate in the solution. Right? And we focused in the titration video, we really focused on this change, right? But here in the buffering video, we're going to focus on this change because it's in this region where we can add, right? We can add a lot of sodium hydroxide and still get very little pH change, right? This is 3.79, and this is 5.70. So we can add, right, a lot of base, right? This is, this is a difference of 0 0.08 molar base with only a, you know, with less than a 2 pH unit pH change, right? And so this region from here to here is our buffering region, right? If we look right? This point right here was our inflection point when we had, when our concentration of our acid, in this case acetic acid, was equal to the concentration of its conjugate base anion, right? Right in the middle of the range, right? Which would be our 4.745 where we were working before. And so really, you know, we've got 4.745 up to 5.7 approximately. So we got plus one pH unit, and we got a little less than minus one pH unit, right? That is where we have good effective buffering. All right? Down here, we have 90% acid and only 10% conjugate base, right? Up here we have 10% acid, 90% conjugate base, right? Up here, right? So there is our effective buffering range. And so we can make a buffer anywhere in this range. And, you know, whatever pH we, you know, at, if we choose a pH at which we make our buffer, right, there's a, a concept called buffering capacity, right? Let's go blue, right? Buffering capacity. And it's, you know, at whatever pH we make our buffer. So let's say we, we made up our buffer with this combination of, of acid and base that gives it that pH, right? So the buffering capacity is however much base you can add to get to sort of that buffering limit, or however much acid you can add 
to get to that buffering limit, right? That's the buffering capacity. How much, how much base can be consumed until, and still stay within this, this range of concentrations, okay? And so, right, you can adjust your pH of your buffer based on the ratio of your acid and your base. You don't always have to make them exactly equal, right? You can set a pH anywhere in this buffering region just by varying how much of the acid form you put in and how much of the basic form you put in. Okay, so what is the pH of a buffer solution that we make by putting in 0 0.01 molar acetic acid and 0 0.015 molar sodium acetate, right? Well, we know our sodium acetate will dissociate to make 0 0.015 molar acetate ions, right? So if we plug that into our Ka expression, right, our 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is going to be equal to our hydrogen ion concentration times our acetate ion concentration, which is 0 0.015 divided by our undissociated acid concentration, which is 0 0.010, right? I should probably add a zero here, just to be consistent in terms of significant figures, right? So what do we get, right? We get 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0 0.01, divided by 0 0.015, and we equals the hydrogen ion concentration, and that's equal to, right, there's our 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5, and the pH is equal to 4.921, right? Okay. So, we've got that. Right? So, what is the capacity of this buffer, right, that we just made to absorb base, right? This is a buffering capacity question, right? And so, we, we have a total buffer capacity, or a total buffer concentration, right? Our 0 0.0100 acid plus 0 0.01 Five zero base is zero point zero two five zero total concentration, right? And if we're absorbing base, we can go until we get to zero two five zero times point nine zero. That's our ninety percent. Zero point zero two two five molar of the basic form, right? The C2H3O2 minus, right? We can get to that concentration and stay within our buffering limits. That's 90% in our basic form. If we consider our reaction that we considered before, right? Sodium hydroxide reacting with our acid form to make our basic form in water, right? And we consider our initial conditions, our change, and our final, right? What we've got here is we know that our initial concentration of acid is 0 0.010. Our initial concentration of this is 0 0.015, right? right? This is liquid, so we don't care about it. And we know we can go until we have 0 
0 to 2 5 of this, which leaves us with 0 0.0025 of that, right? Right? That's what that's what we get from here. Well, now we know what our changes are, right? We know that our sodium hydroxide is going to be limiting, so it's got to end at zero, right? Because we didn't react all of our acid, right? So this has to be then, right, plus 0 0.0075, right? That had to go up that much which means since it reacted one to one, this had to go down 0 0.0075, which means this had to go down 0 0.0075, which means it had to start at 0 0.0075 in order to reach zero at the end, right? So that tells us that this buffer can absorb 0 0.0075 moles of sodium hydroxide per liter of solution and stay within the buffering range. And so that is the buffering capacity for it to absorb base. Now we'll work the same problem, right? We'll start with this same solution and see what its capacity is to absorb acid since these two are not equal. All right, so here's our problem, right? What is the capacity of the 0 0.01 molar acetic acid, 0 0.015 molar sodium acetate buffer to absorb acid, right? We know from our previous slide that our total buffer concentration is 0 0.0250. And we can absorb acid until 90% is acid, is in the acid form. And so we get that same 0 0.0225 molar as the concentration of the acid form. Right? And so we set up the same kind of equation. So we have our acid, let's use hydrochloric acid, right? Plus our basic form, which is our sodium acetate, right? Acid reacts with base to make conjugate acid, C2H3O2, our acetic acid plus, in this case, sodium chloride, right? And we know that, right, our initial concentration of our basic form is 0 0.150. Our initial concentration of our acidic form is 0 0.010, right? We don't know the change yet. We know the final is we want to get this up to 0 0.0225, and we want to get this down to the 0 0.0025, right? So that means we know this, right? That has to go up 0 0.0125, Right? That means this has to go down 0 0.0125, but that means this has to go down 0 0.0125, which means it had to start at 0 0.0125, because that's our limiting reactant that we have to run out of. Right? And so now we know that per liter, this solution can absorb 0 0.0125 moles of acid and stay within 
the buffering capacity. We said the buffering capacity was 0 0.0075 moles of base hydroxide ion per liter. So note, the buffering capacity can be different, right? We have less acid, less of the acid form than the basic form in our buffer. So this buffer can absorb more acid before it reaches the limit of its buffering capacity than it can base, right? Because we are starting with more base, right? So the buffering capacity doesn't have to be equal for acid and base if you start out with a buffer with unequal concentrations of the acidic form and the basic form, okay? So we'll stop there because this video is getting a little long and then I will make another video talking about making buffer solutions of a specific pH.